Boland is quite likely to be on the paper in June 2017 or 2018, uh, I wanted to go through one of her key poems called The War Horse. So just to give you a brief summary of what's going on in this poem first off, it is an image of a loose horse roaming through gardens and destroying plants used to discuss violence uh, in Northern Ireland. The title presupposes an image of a militant horse. At first glance, we encounter something completely different. The horse is only a natural creature roaming around through its surroundings. It is causing destruction simply through its movement. It lacks insight into the damage it's causing. The image creates an atmosphere of tragic misunderstanding, uh, which is a precise and insightful way to examine the difficult subject of violence in Northern Ireland. So looking at these lines here, the concept of death and the adjective casual are juxtaposed here. Just to remind you, juxtaposition is the placement of two things beside each other to produce a contrasting effect. This draws the reader's attention to the idea that death has become casual in this setting. Casual iron of his shoes minting the innocent earth is a simile for the impact that the violence has on defenceless civilians. The verb stamps describes something both irreversible and flippant. It is easy to stamp something, but you cannot unstamp it. Just like shooting a gun at someone, it's easy to pull the trigger, but it, it cannot be undone. It's a great choice of words. Um, this is the kind of thing that counts as precise use of language. That's a term that could feature in a Leaving Sir question. Know that the speaker seems calm. There is nothing unusual about the experience. This is probably a critical comment on how desensitized people tend to get uh, as far as death is concerned once it is constantly happening around them. So. In the next couple of lines, there's an obvious change of tone from the beginning of the poem. The speaker goes from being contemplative and calm, even observing the details of the joints of the horse's legs, hock and fetlock, to being anxious. So note the rhythm, down, he's gone, no great harm is done, as if the observer had to hold her breath or uh, breathe very shallowly as the enemy was passing by so that he wouldn't notice her. And now she can breathe again, and that's um, evidenced by the lengthening of her sentences. This is another good example of precise use of language. The structure of the sentences can serve to convey a feeling as well as the choice of words. It also appears like she is consoling herself after the invasion to try and move on. After all, no great harm is done. Perhaps this is also a remark on how people cope when subjected to violence by telling themselves that it's not that bad after all. Indeed, later in the poem, the speaker confirms that she feels relieved and can breathe again. And this is just a quote from further on down the poem to illustrate that. So the next few lines contain a simile and it's deeply unsettling. Just two lines back, the speaker was relieved. It was no big deal after all. Perhaps this just shows that the speaker feels she is lucky to be alive after the passage of the horse, unlike the flower, one of the screamless dead. These next few lines are a remark on the attitude of those who aren't harmed uh, to those who are suffering. The poet points out the callousness of this kind of an approach. So subterfuge is a rarely used Latinate word um, meaning deception or deviousness. Why the Latinate word? Perhaps the poet is pointing at all the bureaucratic complexities of a peacemaking process that are used to avoid actually addressing the problem. Politicians, diplomats and negotiators are behind curtains, meaning they're not exposed to the violence, but they're the ones who we rely on to end the violence. The fact that Boland's father was the Irish ambassador to Britain is significant in this context as the poet is speaking of violence in Northern Ireland. Ultimately, this poem is very sad. Nobody stands up to the violence or even contemplates doing so. The victims are only a leaf, only a rose. The repetition of only marks both how expendable the victims are as well as how unsupported and defenceless they are. The repetition is subtly spread throughout the poem. 
However, the speaker confronts the reader directly with a sobering truth and a final remark, a world betrayed. Both the plants and the horse are beautiful natural things that should peacefully coexist. Instead, the unformed fear of the speaker and the neighbours betrayed this peace. This poem courageously and insightfully exposes fear and indifference as being causal to the suffering. You can visit the website for more notes on each poet. Um, also, we've done out guides for the 2017 and 18 English exams at higher level. And we also have other subjects.